morning everybody had a little trimming accident went too far down on one side tried to compensate got rid of the beer we're gonna sport the goatee for a little bit I think uh, my last place I was at was the reservoir and uh, now I'm in uh, Hershey Nebraska and uh, I found another free gem of a campground although last night we had thunder and lightning severe thunderstorm warnings no tornadoes but uh, we had lots of thunder and lightning here and it rained and now it's just cloudy and overcast but this was my view and this is a free little like hidden gem campsite I'll show you so there's my RV uh, wildlife area regulations camping camping limited to three days in a six-day period so it's just a little loop right off Lincoln Highway and by Lincoln Highway I mean it was a dirt gravel road it's a bad road out here that but you know I got some nice private little camping here and I liked it uh, some of my new viewers and subscribers have been asking why I don't talk about the locations that I'm staying at on the Lincoln Highway and I have covered this in the past about uh, people abusing it both abusing the lands but also I have people taking the GPS coordinates that I provided for free and selling them on their website with advertising all of my work selling my work I wanted to share those so that other people could enjoy them but I certainly there, there's boundaries so at the end of Lincoln Highway I will address uh, a way that you can get all of the coordinates to every single campground and every single stop that I stopped at on this three-month Lincoln Highway journey there will be something available stay tuned the end once we get to the East Coast right now we're all packed up we're gonna get back on the Lincoln Highway and travel a little bit uh, just wanted you guys to see my dedication to Lincoln Highway twists and turns and dirt and graded roads even though I could be out on Highway 80 out there we're sticking to it here nope that's too fast gotta go 10 I know you can't see the ruts and grades in the road it's bad it's bad it almost looks like it used to be concrete at one time uh, just sharing with you lovely road closed to through traffic It's taken me an hour to get nine miles, and now I gotta turn back around. Hey, I get it, guys. I, I chose this. This is my decision to do Lincoln Highway, but uh, boy, that was worthless. <laughs> I just spent an hour to go nine miles on a dead end just to turn all the way back around and waste another hour to get back on the actual highway that isn't closed so <sighs> yeah hey uh, I get it though you got to go off the beaten path and you got to rough it out sometimes to, to see the quirky stuff in the really good campgrounds I understand that was just a pain I'll oh, shut up nice wagon here I'm here at uh, well uh, Fort Cody whatever that means I think this is a recreation though they got a big uh, Buffalo Bill, I guess, muffler man, you'd call it. <laughs> yeah. And some other random stuff, trading post. Ooh, owie. And manned towers. Yeah. Okay, I'll bite. I still need a Nebraska magnet. You can get coyote tails and hats. Whoa. <laughs> One of those would look great on the front of Yoda, though. Don't you think? <laughs> Wolverine, huh? Did get some magnets. Ah, it's starting to rain again. Let me get inside. I'll, I'll show you what I got. So for my first ever Nebraska magnet, I got this one. It's again wood, a little bit of three dimensional. And look, the windmill turns. Isn't that great? I like that one. And since they did sell magnets, I did get a Fort Cody Buffalo magnet with the fuzz. I mean, that's pretty unique. I don't have anything like that, right? So, <laughs> that's pretty cool. We're pretty much filled up on the side though, so we'll be putting that guy up there. 
And we'll put Mr. Buffalo up there for now. Yeah. Is that a good spot? Meow. What's all this? Is that extra? Yeah, I don't need all that. Can you go to your cat bed, please? We're gonna go, we're gonna travel. Okay, buddy, thank you. It's kind of comical because all the driving I did on the dirt roads of the original Lincoln Highway, there was nothing. I had to come all the way back out to where the exit really, like Fort Cody is right off of Highway 80, right off the exit. So it literally did me nothing. Uh, we'll travel a little farther until there's a better route of the old Lincoln Highway. But we'll stick to pavement for a little bit here. Now, first of all, bear in mind, we're in Nebraska. There's not a whole lot out here, so we'll take what we can get. We're here at the Sod House Museum. Yeah. And we are looking at the largest plow in the world. No idea how, how big this thing is, but it says dedicated to the Sod House settlers. What a breed they were, those Sod House settlers. Color, creed, possession did not matter. Everyone was poor, but none a pauper. Can it be they were richer for having little? Can it be they were wiser for knowing less? John Nyhart. So outside here, he's got some more uh, sculptures that I find more interesting. This is just scrap barbed wire. <laughs> it's pretty cool, actually. Buffalo made of barbed wire. And here's another one. Native American on a horse, it looks like. Huh. Pretty neat detail. And all that barbed wire. And the gentleman who uh, owns the museum and the property here built this sod house 33 years ago. So we'll take a look. First, I gotta mention the smell. It smells a little like uh, cow pies, you know? I mean, it's cool though. It's, and, and, and it looks just like those square things of grass that they would put at like a ballpark, you know, except the grass is dead and the sod's there. Oh, weird. Wow. It's like being inside friend, Fred Flintstone's house almost. Cozy? Actually, it looks really thick. I bet it's insulated really well. But the smell is something else. <laughs> All right, uh, I've driven over 60 miles today. That's kind of my cutoff. So let's go find a campground for today. Um, two things. I just stopped at this rest area here in central Nebraska. And I finally got a Nebraska State Highway map. Finally. <laughs> So that means that um, in the side pocket here in my door, I'm only missing three maps. Alaska, Hawaii, and West Virginia are the only state highway maps that I don't have. Um, how do I say this? On the way back, like I often do at rest areas, just like the truckers, I kind of do a walk around of the RV. I don't know, for some reason, rest areas are the one I like to do that the most. And this time, I found that the rear strap of my TW200 on the inside, closest to the RV, was off. Uh, it was connected to the bike, was not connected to the frame down there. Um, I'm guessing that that probably happened on the really rough road, going 10 miles an hour on that terrible, terrible road. The scary part about it is, had this been scooter life, where I only had one on the handlebar here, one on the handlebar here, if the inside one goes, this just pulls it off the RV and it would have drug the scooter. Uh, the TW, I have handlebars and the back and one of the back inside one came off. I'd rather it be an outside one, that way it pulls the bike to the RV, you know, but now I know. Uh, if we're going over anything bumpy, monitor it on the camera live on here if possible i don't have any service so i can't do that right now but you know what i mean or, or check it often enough also I, I like to check the brittleness of the seams and everything i will probably be replacing those straps every four to five months anyway just just to make sure it's good quality it may be a little uncomfortable to see that strap just hanging off on the inside Definitely gonna have to be a lot more mindful and keep an eye on it on the bumpier roads for now on. Thankfully, it is a redundancy system so that if one gives, there is still always going to be another one on that side. There will there'll be, still be three working ones if one fails, basically. But that puts more tension on the other three. With the, so that's, that's all I'm saying. I'm glad I caught it. I'm glad nothing bad happened. Back on the road we go. 
it's funny how you can go from a dirt graded road, can't even go 10 miles an hour, to this. This is that same exact road. If it were connected and going all the way through, uh, this is the same Lincoln Highway road out of Gothenburg here. And uh, this has been freshly paved. Very nice. So it's hit and miss, see? Now, uh, we'll hit up this campground up here. I have serv I don't have service. I have my maps working because I logged into Wi-Fi at Pizza Hut back there, punched in the coordinates for the free campsite, and uh, now it doesn't matter because GPS is going to get me there. I don't need service. So one way around uh, the no service thing, or you could just get Verizon. It's just Wyoming and Nebraska that have like almost no AT and T. Um, okay, so we. We do need to get back onto a dirt road here to get to the campground a mile away. Now we're in Willow Island, Nebraska. It probably doesn't even look bad to you guys. It just looks like ground. It's just stupid graded. la di la di la di oh. It's gonna be worth it, Jax. It's gonna be worth it. Is that better? I think it was better at 10 miles an hour, actually. It's amazing. Okay, now we're gonna cross over I-80 for some reason. It's a one-lane bridge. Oh, it's the same exact type of campground that I was at last night. Wildlife area regulations, camping limited to three days. Pack it in, pack it out, no alcohol. Willow Island Wildlife Management Area, Nebraska. So, same department. I don't know if you'd call that the same as a BLM in, in another state or, or what. But it just, see how that just kind of cuts through there? Since there's nobody behind me, I'm gonna go walk this and check it out first. I'll be back. It is beautiful back there. Don't bring a Class C back there. <laughs> There's nowhere to turn around. The only way I could enjoy that is to either back in all the way and turn or back out when I want to leave. So it's better for like tent camping. I mean, this one's not as pretty. I'm not camping underneath trees, but it is gonna be lakefront, so it'll work. I don't know, it's uh, it's weird and it's quiet for me when I don't have service and there's not a whole lot going on. So I tried really hard today to see some new stuff. Um, the highlights of this video for me was the campground I was at last night and this one at the lake where nobody's at. That's what I like the most about Nebraska is the camping. So, I think Nebraska is well known as like a flyover state or a drive-through state because there's just not a whole lot in Nebraska as far as man-made type stuff. But when it comes to like natural beauty and campgrounds especially, this is a boondockers paradise, okay? Just going 30 to 50, 60 miles a day, I'm probably passing stuff like this every five miles. There's probably, they're just all over the place. now. This one is really close to I-80. You saw we just drove over that little dirt overpass. Actually, it was concrete, but that's Highway 80. So freeway noise is gonna be a factor. There's a train tracks nearby, but I'm out here alone and it's just so quiet otherwise, besides the highway, so. Uh. Anyway, I, I kind of apologize if I've been negative today. It's just been one of those weird days for me. It's, it's been strange. I think it'll do my soul good to get back to civilization here soon and start seeing more people in Nebraska, okay? So there's some big cities coming up in Nebraska like Lincoln and Omaha. And um, right now, 
just uh, enjoying enjoying this. Anyways, guys, have a great night. Jackson, I'll see you back on the Lincoln Highway here in a couple days. Bye-bye.